The Minnesota Vikings have been around since 1961. And I just want them to win a damn Super Bowl before I die. Welcome to Before I Die with Jesse and Miles on Purple Daily and Score North. Just one, guys. Just one before I die. Unfortunately, probably maybe not going to be this year. As much as we liked it after the 5-0 and start for your Minnesota Vikings. Two straight L's. I'm Jesse Pierce. He's Ross Brundle. He's Miles Gorham. We are back. We're not going to rehash Thursday. We don't really need to go into detail on Thursday. Have we all moved on, guys, from the loss? Yes, it was a face mask. Not the reason that they lost. I would like to point that out. That was not. I'm sorry. I'm still waking up and choosing violence. Uh, but how are we feeling now that your Minnesota Vikings are sitting at five and two miles? It feels a little different. The vibes are a little different here in Minnesota right now. Yeah, things have definitely changed over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, injuries, you know, Christian Derrissaw going down, unfortunate out for the year now. That's a huge, that's a huge loss to this team. And like you were hoping to add TJ Hawkinson into an already loaded offense, and now you have to swap him for Christian Derrissaw. So that's that's just unfortunate. Um, the defense just regressing heavily and offenses having answers for the defense is, has been tough. Um, Blake, Cla- Blake Cashman being out is, is really tough. That middle of the field has been wide open the last couple of weeks and teams are, these two offenses are taking advantage of it. It's just rough, right? Like mm-hmm. it's just not that fun. The off- the outside corners are getting, they look old. <laughs> the, the pass <laughs> rush isn't really getting home unless they have to blitz and even the blitzes like Offenses, their their solve for our defense now is just max protect and run to the middle of the field, and they'll probably find somebody open. And that's just kind of what it's been, and it's been really tough. And so I don't know how you find solves in the middle of the season uh, to to readjust to that, but um, I'm hoping I, – I do believe in Brian Flores. I don't think this is a Brian Flores issue. I think this is just like teams are figuring out the weaknesses and after seven weeks of you know the season and – um, I just think it's that time time of year where teams are just kind of like, okay, here's what you guys are doing, and here's how we can we can uh, work against it. So that's yeah. where my biggest thing is. Um, Darnold, I think Darnold's played really well, um, but it's like the just the couple mistakes that he makes every game. You're like, it's like it's like the like face palm thing. You're like sec, like second and medium, and he you know takes a 13 yard sack and takes you out of field goal range, takes you out of like any chance of going going for it on fourth down because you were late in the game, like. All of these small things add up, and it's just, uh, And I'm sorry, know? why are you surveying while you're in the end zone? Like, you cannot oh, yes. be doing 100%. that. Like, that's where I really, and I know that upset a lot of people, but I'm like, yes, there was a face mask, but he needs to have enough wherewithal to know where he's at and you're get in the, the end hell zone. out of the end zone, man. Yes. Like, come on. Don't rely on the refs to, like, no. bail you out of a scenario that you shouldn't have put yourself in. Like, right. I'm with you 100%. Because uh, he did that, and on the that the sack I was talking about uh, just a minute ago, instead of like rolling out, either dirt it to Aaron Jones in the flat, or try to th- complete a short pass and just live to play another down. And sometimes mm-hmm. I don't think he's willing to live to play another down, and he's trying to play too much hero ball in some of these scenarios rather than just like taking what's the defense is giving him, even in high pressure situations. Jesse and Miles, I think some people are going to hate this, but comment away. I'm not deterred at all. Again, I, I, I you don't like that you've lost two in a row, but if you were to tell me going into a portion of the schedule where I think there's some meat on the bone, you still have to win those games. I think we'll touch on that. If you were to tell me that this team was going to be five and two without telling me how you got there, I think everybody would be happy with that. And I was more worried about the, uh, I still call them the St. Louis Rams more than most people. And it, it turned out the chickens came home to roost. I guess I didn't expect two rock star wide receivers to both return on the same night. We knew one was coming back at classic Vikings luck that both come back. But to miles point, yeah, they kind of continued to just expose the Vikings defense made the, mm-hmm. made the corners look old. I like the way you said that miles, excuse me. I'm getting choked up again, talking about my favorite team, <laughs> but I just don't think you can be all that upset. I think you can no. be more upset if the Vikings don't come out of this quote unquote mini buy and beat the Colts on Sunday night, I think that's where you can start to be a little annoyed and then maybe start to think, okay, maybe this really wasn't a very good football team. Maybe it was a flash in the pan to start the year, but if they bounce back and they beat the Colts and they're six and two, I just don't understand how you can be too upset about that. For me, I talked about this at the beginning of the year. I'm sorry. I hope I'm wrong. This team's not going to win the Super Bowl. 
Enjoy the wins. Let the losses roll off you like uh, how they say that water on a duck's back. Yeah. All I care about is just don't let the Packers win the Super Bowl and preferably not the Lions either. But beyond that, enjoy the season. Have some fun. Water off a gray duck's back. I mean, I think it's this team was not a contending team. You looked at it as next year that window opens next year with J.J. McCarthy. Next year is the year we've been talking about that all season. This was maybe a six win team when you looked at it on paper going into the year. And I think everybody was okay with those low expectations. But then you rattle off five straight on arguably the tougher end of the schedule. I mean, that was a gauntlet when you looked at it at the beginning of the year. The rest of these games, those are navigatable, right? Those are very winnable games in in most instances, with the exception of being on the road in Detroit. But I think you're absolutely right, Miles. They figured out this defense. That's the biggest problem. Those warts that are now being exposed had been masked by really yep. great things, by the sacks, by the tackles, by all of the good things that Brian Flores' defense can do. You talked about the pass. The pass defense ranks 30th in the league, you guys. 27th PFF pass rushing grade. Plus, now you're out without Darisa. How much, and I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit more next week before the November 5th trade deadline, but how much would you guys consider bolstering the defensive end of things at deadline to see if that could help miles. I, I, so I know there's been a lot of conversation around like, Oh, trade the trade away the first round pick, give it away and go get an impact player. And I think you only do that for like maybe just a couple of players within the league, right? Mm-hmm. Like a, a, we've talked about Dexter Lawrence, uh, Jeffrey Simmons, like not, is it Jeff? Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons uh, from the, from the Titans, like a couple of like true impact players, I'd even put uh, like a Denzel Ward from the Browns in that like category corner, but like otherwise, like I don't want to move that pick, and I don't think you're getting any of those players. Mm-hmm. And so it's more like, okay, if you want to go bolster, I think that's fine, but you don't need to use that first round pick. I just think that's you're not an all in. You shouldn't be an all in team. I think you can still push some chips in without being all in and giving up some of your future, unless you can get like a truly like one of the best high impact type of players in one of those guys. So I'm okay. Like, like we've talked about, like a Dalvin Tomlinson and a, a, a defensive line, I think would be great. If you could use one of your fifth round picks to go get him, maybe you go get like a, a younger corner, someone that, but what I also like is not going to after rentals. Go get me a guy that has like two years left on his deal. Right. That's a little bit, not doesn't have to be old. Doesn't have to be like super young, but somewhere in that like in between stage, like that you can have for multiple years, then mm-hmm. it feels like it's more worth it to spend a little bit of capital to go get guys that you have control over that you can, you can use for your future too, not just now. Right. Like T.J. Hawkinson fli- was that great exactly. example of that. Yep. And on the flip side, it's not a sell, sell, sell situation for the Vikings yes. either, right? Like you're you're okay. Like things are going okay. Uh, Ross, what are your thoughts? Well, I think exactly what Miles said is exactly where I'm at. I wouldn't move that first round pick unless I knew I was getting a player with long term that is going to be a part of this thing as you hope to hit that J.J. McCarthy window when – more than likely he is your week one starter next year. Are there things I would try and do to signal to my team that yes, we do want to win now and take this thing as far as we can. Absolutely. But to miles's point, I think that has to just be a veteran player. Who's going to cost you very little capital of what you have coming up in 2025, which isn't much as miles stated, or you're going to dip into 2026, which you already did to get cam acres. Now, basically you just did a draft pick swap. You traded a sixth for a seventh there, but and he I just played. Yeah, exactly. Other than look <laughs> awful on kick returns. So I I don't really think this Vikings team, I, I, it's fun to talk about and you absolutely should talk about it because stuff happens in sports all the time, including with Minnesota teams that you don't expect. But I just don't think this team with the limited draft capital that they have should be looking to trade those picks to make this team a Super Bowl contender because I just don't think they are one. And I don't think there's one player that can do that where you look at that and say, wow, we're now better than the Detroit lions. I just don't think that that's there. Yes. Miles. 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 Yeah. Oh, perfect. Um, my, my only question to you two is, do we feel because of losing Darius, uh, you're kind of weaker, uh, cro- now you're weaker across the offensive line across the board. Now, uh, Darius and, and O'Neal really like anchored that offensive line. You lose one of the best left tackles in football. What if they went out and got a right guard, to like mm-hmm. truly solidify the interior um, because obviously that's a major weak link that's harder to um, cover up when, you know, your, your tackles are hurt, especially there. So I hear, um, I know that maybe you fortify the interior just to help the, the outside guys so that you can help 
not have to worry about the interior as much, and you can give help to that left tackle, whether it's uh, Quesenberry or Rouse. Maybe he starts at left tackle. I don't know. But like, and then you can give more help to the outside because you don't have to worry about the interior as much. Whereas right now, you have that leak at left tackle, and that right guard is really weak. Mm-hmm. Like, Ed Ingram, as someone I was hoping could like take that reins and like be your future there, that's just not the case. He's not very good, unfortunately. I don't think Dalton Reisner is a long term option and is someone that's going to solve the problem. Right. Um, maybe short term, but like maybe you find somebody like a Wyatt Teller. That's an, another name from the Browns. Like, I know they won yesterday, but like maybe the. Maybe they're willing to move him, you you know, get a guy to help like fortify that right side of the line. I think if I can dip into 2026 and we're talking like a mid round draft pick, maybe, but I just can't part with pretty much anything that's left in 2025 unless you truly want to have no draft picks. I think on the offensive line, the short term patchwork solution is probably moving to make the offensive line fortified and better probably moving Reisner to start at right guard. And then maybe are you talking about putting Blake Brandle at left tackle? He's played there before he's had some decent success. Is he maybe there over the uh, long sleeve wonder Dan Questenberry? He's got a boot those, by the way, he looks terrible. David, David, sorry, David, get rid, get rid of those. They look awful. Oh man. I love it. I just, it's classic. An interesting. Yeah. We'll see how they, how they handle that. Well, right. And, and like I said, I think people, the scolders are hitting a little bit of the panic button, but I want to mm-hmm. remind people it's not that dire five and two. A lot of teams would still kill to be five and two at this For point sure. in the season. Um, you know, I think the other thing that has stressed people out is in the span of a week, the Vikings went from first to third and were a hail Mary away <laughs> from being tied for last. So Isn't understandably there's a lot of like, oh my gosh, the world is falling apart here in Minnesota, but that's not the case because let's take a look, guys, at the next four games. You're home against the Colts, you're at Jacksonville, then you're at Tennessee, and you're at Chicago. Uh, Miles, how much emphasis are you putting on this rebound win against the Indianapolis Colts? I mean, it feels like a must win. You hate saying must win at this juncture in the season, but you need to get that optimism back. You need that positivity throwing through the purple fan base. Um, So I think a air quotes must win situation might be in place i think that feels appropriate must yeah win must win i view mm-hmm. it also as like a get right game right because like yeah. you as you have you seen anthony richardson has struggled throwing the football um accurately he's just not completing because passes. he's tired he's just tired is all <laughs> he's, he's very tired miles lay, very lay tired. off that was uh oh i, I don't know why he would ever admit that i mean part of me kind of appreciates the the attempt at authenticity because i don't think that's the case right i don't think that was at all the reason he stepped out but i mean you know why not toss it out there because maybe somebody is a little empathetic to it like oh man he's tired he's tired he just he's tired he's a little tired i get it but like dude you just you don't have to tell people that just say like like i don't know like it's okay to like fib a little bit (laughs) (laughs) like your teammates might know and they might not like it but like you telling the world just puts even more of it like onus on it Mm -hmm. and it's just like it lets just, you say sometimes it just looks bad and brings you unwanted. I think pressure and yeah. eyes that you don't need when your your tenure as quarterback hasn't maybe lived up to what the Colts no. wanted it to be. And then you're throwing stuff like, oh, I just needed a little bit of a break. I right. get it. Other players get breaks, but you know what? The offensive linemen don't get they don't get no. rotational breaks. I know the wide receivers and running backs do, but the offensive linemen, you don't think they're gas trying to protect your ass the entire game? Come on. My, well, and my there's, kid there's in flag ways. football stays out longer before water, right? between water breaks. Like, well, on, and there's <laughs> ways. I don't remember when it was part. It was pretty late in the game, though, wasn't it? Like, like, But there are ways to like slow the offense down for yourself, catch your breath, hand the ball off or something, like just to give yourself a minute to recover. You don't need to just get off the field and be like, like come on. Like, I don't know. <laughs> What Anyways. if Jaden Daniels halfway through his 11 seconds of running around before passing the Hail Mary just said, guys, stop. I need a breather. Can we resume this play here in 30 seconds? It feels very Gen. What is that? Gen Z? I'm not going to go there, but Why? it does. Why? It does. Well, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Is that too I... aggressive? Gen Zers, we appreciate your hate comments. Please direct those towards oh. at Jesse Pierce in the comments <laughs> section. Well, I no, well, just, we gotta blame. You like, know what? We shouldn't. We shouldn't blame the the next the next iteration of the of generation, right? Like, I don't know. Like, blame last, their parents. Blame their parents. Uh, Miles, yeah. what generation are you going to offend? Because last week I was told I have first world problems for being angry at old people. Jesse now dislikes the young people. <laughs> 
So next week, Miles, middle-aged people. It's on you. I'll, I, I am. I'm going after the, what is there that, Gen, Gen X? I'm millennial. So what is that, Gen X? I go after Gen yeah. X. Yeah, millennials are the best, so that's fine. We don't yeah, need to attack them, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah, the Colts. I, 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 let's go. Let's let's we can get attack them, right? We don't like the Colts. We're gonna beat them. Yes, on. it needs to be, <laughs> but it needs to be a get right game. Like the D, the DBs need to perform well in this game because the accuracy is not there from Anthony Richardson. So you better be in position to make plays. If he's carving our defense up in the air, there's a major problem, right? Mm -hmm. Does this? We've talked about this. This kind of reminds me of, I know this isn't 2018. I, I think that the team has kind of reverted to like 2016 vibes a little bit. Started really strong. We'll see how they finish. Maybe they finish better than 2016 did. But a little bit 2018 is Anthony Richardson, Josh Allen, and you get that Josh Allen blowout game. Like, I'm not I'm not putting that in the world. I don't think so. You did. I don't think he's as good as what, you know, Josh Allen was even as, as a rookie. But like... Um, I don't need that, right? Like, we don't need that. Get right. This needs to be a get right for that defense. Stop the run. Put it all out the run. And the the, the guys on the outside, they better lock up. That That's mm -hmm. kind of what I, how I feel about it. Don't give up big plays. And I think we've done a good job of not giving up big plays. But they're starting to give up chunk plays. And that's where I think that is really hurting the defense. Jesse, Miles, either one of you terrified that the Vikings had trouble um, grappling and bringing down Matthew Stafford. Now they're going to have to try oh, and do the same thing well, to Anthony Richardson. Tell me Richardson. that wasn't a huge part of the game, too. Yeah. You had two, Grenard and, and Harrison Phillips, both not tackling and sacking Matthew Stafford on third down. That turns into a touchdown. That's mm -hmm. huge. That turned that turned the tie in the game. Like, right. come on, man. It is. Looking at the stretch of games, you guys. What do we think the record will be? I mean, eight and three feels good, right? That allows feels for great. for a loss. Is that almost imperative? I hate using that word imperative. Is it critical that they do finish on the right side of this thing uh, in this next four game stretch, Ross? I think eight and three makes you, even though the opponents aren't all that great, I think people will take you more seriously if you're eight and three. Seven and four, obviously worse. I think people are going to forget about you. And, and move on. Games in Chicago, the Vikings have gotten better at playing in Soldier Field, but they always terrify me because of the bad turf and weird things happen there. But if you get out of this stretch eight and three, nine and two, okay, then it's game back on again because you'd like to think, let's say you do win all four. I'm not saying you will, but if you do, you're still neck and neck with the Lions and you get them at their place to end the season. So it's entirely possible if you run the table here in November yeah, you could still be looking at a team that could win the division or get the number one overall seed. I don't believe that that's going to happen. But eight and three, I'm I'm with you, Jesse. I think you said imperative. I feel like getting to eight and three is the number. If you want us to believe that you can go on some sort of run in the playoffs, whether they're all road games or you get a home game or more, you need to take care of these teams. These are four teams that you can beat. Three of them, I would say you should beat. So I think you need to be eight and three. Well, and if you want to stay in the race, this is the best division in football. Like, we literally saw, as we said, as you said earlier, Jesse, the Bears were literally a Hail Mary away <laughs> from tie, at least being tied for fourth place, but both all teams having five plus wins. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how good this division's been this year. And it's so it's gonna be it's gonna go down to the wire at the end of the season. So you need to win the games that are that are extremely winnable on your on your uh on your schedule. And this is the stretch that should be the most winnable of like the three, the four. So I think at least three of the four, right. As we talked about, like yeah. getting to eight and three, some in that range, like you need to do it. Also think about this Chicago, maybe a different story because they protect their right. home turf fairly well. You're obviously the home team against the Colts. You should win that game. You're going to go to Tennessee Smashville, as I like to call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you're going to have a lot of fans there. You're absolutely going to have a lot of fans there. You're going to go to Jacksonville. You're going to have half that stadium. So mm -hmm. Even though the game the against the should Saint, be pretty nice, I'm depending, yes, right? Even the game against the St. Louis slash LA Rams, you had a good chunk of fans and you didn't win. It's a lot easier to play those games when half the stadium is your fans. So I, it would be really nice if they could get these next three. And then if you beat the Bears, well, then that's cherry on top of the Sunday. There we go. You know, it's important for the Minnesota Vikings to win these next few games. It's also important to make sure that you're calling the correct people when you have an injury. Ross, who might we be able to call? That was a pretty good segue. I'll give you that one. A quick shout out to our exclusive personal injury law firm of Purple Daily. That is Nicolay Law. They know that when you or a loved one 
You get injured, ordinary life, which we sometimes take for granted, can come to a stop. We don't want that to happen. Things can get complicated. That's where our friends and Nicolay Law come in. They're your normal, everyday folks. You see them out and about when you're running errands, walking the dog. I'm sure Jesse and Miles probably see them all the time. They're the ones who want to make sure you get the compensation you deserve after an accident. So if you've been injured, get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers. You want to get Nicolay. Here's how you do that. You can start your path to winning at NicolayLaw.com. That's NicolayLaw.com. Or give them a call at 855-NICOLAY. That's 855-N-I-C-O-L-E-T. Comments from YouTube. I lined up three for you guys. Two come from Ventline. One comes from our last Before I Die. We'll start with Nick DeGreat33, who says, Defense wins championships. Get out of the cover zero and make a stop. Sunday, the Lions scored three straight times. Thursday, they let the Rams put up 30. This is not a Sam Darnold problem. Tighten it up, Brian Flores, and my best Aaron Boone. Tighten it up, Brian Flores. (laughs) One to 10. Jesse, Miles, I don't remember who I started with last week. I'll start with Jesse. One to 10, your worry level on the Vikings defense. I mean, five. Again, I made a commitment to a serious relationship with the Minnesota Vikings early on in the season, and I'm going to stand by that because I'm loyal. Um, No, I think it's exactly what we discussed earlier. It's just those warts are no longer masked. You need the league has figured it out, which it was going to happen. It was bound to happen at some point. But I have faith in Brian Flores. I think that they can figure it out. Um, I would also like to take a look at just in general, the Vikings second half in from top to bottom needs to be better in the second half of every game as well. But for Brian Flores, I'd give it a six. There's obviously a level of concern because can you fix that to finish out the year? But I think he's capable of doing it. And I think the players are capable of rebounding and figuring out those issues that they're having. Again, I think the losses are good to find those problems, to find the inconsistencies and remedy them before it gets too late in the season. Can I just first say that Jesse walked herself up from five to six as she talked? Yes, that was very good. I got more concerned. I got more worried worried. as you talked. (laughs) I was like, oh, well, and then there's this. No, okay, we're going to go six. Six feels good. Did did you have the vision of Matthew Stafford about to be sacked and then escaping and throwing a touchdown in your head at that? that. Who with that that hair flowing? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it is. I did. Six is still generous. What do you got, Miles? What do do you got? I would say it's probably in that five range too. I think there's opportunities now that teams are figuring you out to make adjustments. I think the one thing that I'm still confident in is the communication and how well these guys communicate with each other on the de- on defensive side of the ball. And I think Flores is I think Flores is one of the best defensive coaches in the league. So I think he's going to find adjustments. Right? Teams are going to start figuring it out when you come up and ru- and have seven eight in the box and looking like you're going to show who's going to blitz, who's going to go. Teams have a solve for it. So how do you adjust to that? Right? And how do you adjust from, like the the commenter said, Dan DeGreat? Is that what it was? Shout out. Nick, uh, Nick DeGreat. Nick, Nick, Nick DeGreat. DeGreat. Nick DeGreat. Mm-hmm. Great name. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I think he was right. Like, it, it can't all just be cover zero all the time. Uh, as you can see, the corners, they get beat pretty. If, if teams are blocking up, you know, on your, your blitzes and those things and those cover zeros, um, teams are winning in those one-on-one routes. And I think... You have teams like the Rams, the, the Lions, who who do a lot of pre-snap motion, which I think um, tells a lot of that story. I, not every team does a lot of pre-snap motion the way that those two offenses do. So I think you might be able to get right with against some other teams that don't do it as much um, and don't do as much like misdirection. Um, but yes, I think they need to find some adjustments. So, so overall, I'd say like a five right now. If they go into if they go into this week and it's like a major issue against Anthony Richardson in the past game, you'll see me hit jump to like an eight. Well, especially when you've had the the mini buy, as people right. like to call it, to try it to try and get right. I think your guys is five to six is fair. Anything lower than like three doesn't seem like you've taken any assessment of the last mm-hmm. two games. Anything seven or more seems like maybe a bit too premature of panic level. So I, I like where you guys are at. Comment number two from Brad Pirachota, ninety two ninety three. This is also from Ventline on Thursday night. So wait. After the first two drives, you score two field goals and you're complaining about the defense. TD, TD, punt, punt, end of half, field goal, field goal, punt, safety. Start with you, Miles. 
who's to blame for the Vikings' recent offensive struggles? Not scoring touchdowns like they were at the prolific rate the first three and a half games of the season. Yeah, I, I again, I think as teams see, see more of you on film, they get more answers. And if anybody knows Kevin O'Connell, it's Sean McVay, right? He's mm-hmm. really close with him. So they had they had some solves because they run very similar offenses. They're very similar in their style, and he learned under McVay, right? So I think I think it it's a little bit more – I don't like to use an excuse, but I think it's understandable against the Rams. The Lions and, and some of the other teams, when there's offensive woes, it's not as much of an excuse. I don't give you the same excuses. But um, I think this week it was McVay understanding – what Kevin O'Connell wants to do in certain situations because he's worked so closely with him. Um, but they do need to figure it out. Like Aaron Jones can't play 90 plus percent of the snaps as good as he is. You can tell that he's just going to continue to wear down. That's just not sustainable. Um, you need to figure out the run game again. It's, it's struggling. Um, mm-hmm. And you need to find a second option behind Justin Jefferson right now. Like Jordan Addison does get open, but he's not seeing a lot. I know I saw that. I saw that. I saw it. I, it was I didn't overreact to it because I don't think it meant what people think it means. Anyways, and his I was dad just came wor- out. His I was dad just came out and disputed he, what, it. By the what, way, what, what, yeah, I was worried he got about? another ticket. That's what I was worried about. <laughs> he, apparently, on his Instagram, Jordan Jordan Addison said something like hashtag free three or something like that. Well, um, yeah, I, saw it. I don't re- overreact to that stuff. Apparently, his dad came out and said no, he doesn't want to get traded. Um, blah blah blah. I think it was more of him just saying like I'm trying to like roll. I'm ready to roll. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm ready to go. Um, and I think getting ready to get more than 3.9 points in fantasy football for people that decide to play him. You're crushing me. Exactly. Obligatory fantasy football mention. Shout out Travis Kelsey for finally getting more than five, though. 20 points last night. And I beat him. CeeDee Lamb, baby. Oh, I had Jalen Hurts going. I had one chain going. Kelsey, and I'm still going to lose. My best week all year. The Lions killed me, though, because I had Montgomery and St. Brown. They both scored, luckily, so that helped. But... Mm -hmm. Anyways, the Lions, the Lions going, are getting so going. wicked on offense, Miles. We're gonna have to start drafting their left tackles and guards to yeah, play, Mon- you know, Mon- tight end for him. points. Right. And Amon Ra did terrible yesterday. Then for like he didn't. But he had get, a touchdown. Thank he, God. That was like the, yeah, the that saving wasn't, grace. But not what I expect anyway. Uh, for yes. sure. No, no, I'm with you. And they scored 52 <laughs> points. Crazy. Yeah. Anyways, Jesse, yeah. Who do you got? Um, I well, yeah. Wrap up your point, Miles. Then we'll see what Jesse. I don't even got. remember what I was saying at this point. Uh, well, I'll, let me recap for you. You were basically saying that's the same thing that's happening to the defense. Once teams see you on tape yes. a bit more, they start oh, to figure yes. it out. The Vikings yeah. are going to have to also figure it out and punch back. Oh, mm-hmm. and and what I was trying to say is like they don't have no, they don't have a consistent second option. It's Sam Darnold throwing to Justin Jefferson, which makes all the sense in the world. Right. But it can't just be Justin Jefferson, right? It needs. We get T.J. Hawkinson back. Hopefully, there's a big solve there in the middle of the field. But like, you need to get some other guys involved and get some 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 of those plays back that I feel like that we were seeing earlier in the season that we're just not seeing now. And mm-hmm. those guys can win consistently one on one because they're going to see more of those one on one matchups. So let's give them some more opportunities. And I don't know if it's Darnold, I don't know if it's O'Connell, but let's find some solves um, for those guys and some options for those guys. Yeah, I mean, there are certain plays throughout the season that you're like, gosh, it'd be great to have Hawk there. Hawk would be a great option for us. So, I mean, that's that's going to be huge, but I'd agree with everything Miles said. Mostly, I'd like to see more targets. Again, JJ is everything, right? Jets is is all of it, but you need to have those other options that spread it out a little bit. And they're good the enough, out. too. Right. It's not like they're right. guys, this isn't 2018 where it was like Diggs and Thielen and mm-hmm. nobody else. Yep. You have guys. like You mm-hmm. have lots of lots of weapons on this offense to work with. Right. Also want to point out, and I'm not blaming him for the loss, but you you're possibly a Jalen Naylor drop of a walk in touchdown oh, away true. from being six and one. So that's people probably aren't overreacting as much as we probably all have been over the last what now eight nine days. Comment number three comes from Mark Campbell. It's a fun one. I know the audience wants to know. He says your kids will be gone before you know it. I think this is in reference to Jesse, but it could also be in reference to Miles. Uh, he says to enjoy the mess now. So I got to thinking. I know last year, Jesse, you did an episode of Before I Die as the uh, goalpost that was leaning for Vikings field goal kickers not to be able to make. Very haunting costume. Very well done. I was kind of hoping you would have that again this year. I mean, I went all out. That was PVC piping. I painted it yellow. It was it's great. stuck in my back. It was so good. Yeah. It's fantastic. I think maybe you should bring that to one of your uh, Jets hockey shows, even though it would make no sense at all. Uh, what are your kids going to be for Halloween? I know you guys have a gaggle of kids. I want to know. What are the costumes? 
Who wants I've got to go first? Two police officers and a princess, naturally. But she loves it. The <laughs> princess dress glows in the dark, and it's so cool. So there's there's that. The kids have already lost half of the police costume accessories. <laughs> and so they're like, Mom, you can just buy me a new one. And I'm like, I'm not gonna buy you a new one. I told you guys not to be playing with it everywhere. Like, this is your fault. And they're like, Well, it's your fault because you let us put it on when we did pumpkins on Friday. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, sure. So <laughs> It'll be a police officer without handcuffs and a walkie-talkie. They may end up being lawyers based off of that conversation. I know. This is very true. <laughs> this is very true. But the princess is just so sweet. So good. Miles, what do you got? So my my son is going to be uh, a Pokemon trainer, Ash Ketchum. He's got nice. Him. We got him the little, like, hat. He has the hat, the the shirt, and the gloves. And then he's got Pokemon a Pokemon belt with the, with the Pokeballs. He's really excited about that. Uh, my daughter's going to be a princess unicorn. Um, nice. And like you, Jesse, I told her, because she's been trying to wear it, I told mm-hmm. her, we put it away. I said, let's put it in a special drawer, and we'll get it next week when we go. Um, and she brought, but it came with like a unicorn, uh, like light up unicorn like oh, yes. headband. So and good. so she she got to bring that to daycare last week. She was really excited about that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and she just, yeah, it's super cute. She just talked about how... Uh, the ma- there's magic and all that stuff is super cute right so yeah. um yeah i'm excited now here's what i have for you guys and i'm genuinely curious about this no children trunk or treats is everybody doing one now and is halloween now like a week or two long what or two week that? long celebration everybody's doing them so my husband and, just and asked Jesse, about that ex- too explain them to me i i'm I believe you show up, it's like a car thing, and you're just yeah. place to place in cars? Like, how does well, this work? So, I don't know, and I guess they've been doing it. My friend who lives in Iowa, she's been doing it forever. Like they, well, because they have to in Iowa. Because they, they have yeah. too far houses, right? Like, there's not ways there's to There's no it. neighborhoods. They have right. to drive around the state. Um, But now, like, our school district just did one, too, where it's like, you have people from the community that come in, or businesses, and yeah, basically... It's you trick or treat between the back ends of cars that people decorate. And I think like you, I mean, I don't know. It, it's just there's seems... opportunity for candy at every single turn these days. And I don't feel it okay. necessary. At the base level, if you think about it, Halloween is already sketchy. Going from <laughs> going to random people's Doing houses. Doing the thing that candy. you stress yeah. to your kids to never do in real life. Like, let's go take candy from strangers. Like, absolutely. Now, candies from candies. Candy from strangers out of the trunk of somebody's car seems yeah. even more sketchy. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's I it's something to do that's free, I guess, which is kind of fun. Like I support it that way. But yeah, I, there was one yesterday and I told my husband because I was working the golf course. I was like, why don't you take the kids up? He's like, no, what is this? I don't even understand what this is. And I was like, all right, I don't know. It's something to do. I'm a big proponent of doing things if you guys didn't know. so Well, Jesse, the candy may be free and maybe it is a little bit sketchy, but free and not. Not sketchy is our Roku TV giveaway on the Score North mobile app. 75 inch Roku Pro Series Smart TV with a wall mount up for grabs on the Score North mobile app. Just use the Score North app to register, kick off, and kick back with your new TV this holiday season from Roku. All the best from the best seat in your house, your couch. That's the Score North app under listener rewards. Register to win for that 75 inch. Roku Pro Series Smart TV. Can Do you I know what that? else you can listen to from the comfort of your home and on your couch? St. Thomas football, baby. That's right. St. Thomas football team travels to the Bluegrass State this Saturday on 1500 ESPN and 1500ESPN.com. Next up, Moorhead State University. Pre-game at 1130. Kickoff at noon on 1500 ESPN and 1500ESPN.com. Bluegrass music do anything for either one of you? I don't mind it. There's very little music I can't jive out to. The most, it's like hard heavy metal. I can't do heavy metal. I, I just do, it I doesn't do, do much. Just don't really I don't mind country. some rock. There's a I'm level not the of country it. Country fan either, but I like some country. This I weekend was do. a big country it's weekend. Not surprising. I don't know I, I mean. actually I feel offended. I skimmed that <laughs> um, Hurricane Relief concert, and I thought that was pretty good for Carolina with James Taylor. Eric yeah, Church. Be, yeah, yeah, that was, that was, that was pretty well, good to watch. Eric Church. Uh, shout out to KBM Jazz 88. They do this thing called Bluegrass Saturday morning from 7 to noon. To me, it's a wild ride. I'll hear one song and go, this is fantastic. And then they'll play the next song and I'm like, oh, barf. Like, it's it's such a <laughs> it's a wild ride of, of emotions listening to bluegrass music for yours yeah, truly. Time now for the Before I Die crew to give us their... <clears throat> 
before I die. I put Miles on the spot first. Last week, I'll give him this week off. Ross, why don't you kick us off for before I die? So I actually dislike that I'm going to say this because I believe playoffs and sports are best when not everybody gets into the playoffs. I think the regular season should mean something unlike the NBA where everybody makes it to the playoffs just for showing up. And unlike the NHL where everybody gets a point just for putting their feet on the ice, that stuff kind of drives me crazy. Okay. Baseball eliminate the wild card teams. Go back to just one wild card. Okay. We want a round of five, a round of seven in the world series, or just do a best of seven right away. But I can't believe that I'm saying this. I despise one team having a buy. We kind of talked about this in the NFL. So my solution, even though I just said I don't like that every team makes the playoffs, I think you need to add another team or retract a team, which they're never going to do. So the only solution here is to go to eight teams where the top two seeds get buys. I just think it's a tremendous disadvantage to the two seed that they don't get a buy when it could literally come down to they had a worse conference record and they didn't even play the number one seed. So I think you need to add another team. So there's multiple so buys in the first do round. Do you like the buy or not at all? Because you kind of said both. No, I'm okay with the I'm okay with the okay. buy as long as I think just having one team have it is stupid. I, I don't I don't okay. like that. To me, it would be easier if there were no buys. So you but, either want to you either want to give another team a buy and add another team to the playoffs, which yep, as you said, so there's too many out. already. Yep, waters it down. Mm-hmm. Or, or I would like, or I would like to go back to the old se- old system and get rid of a team, because almost okay. every year since mm-hmm. they've done this, that seventh team is nasty. Yeah, and nasty and like the barf type nasty where it you just money. yeah, not money in like now. I know, no, I get it, I get it, and it's never gonna happen. I I just I would like to see that. So we're either gonna cut a team or add a team. So two teams can have buys. Fair, that's fair. Okay. I mean, half the teams make it in the NHL too. That always drives me nuts. I know. Teams. I know. And the NBA. That's what I always say. The, the, right. the play I think the, the play in is, is now different. I like it's, that. It's kinda. different and done a good job of like weeding yeah. out some of the like bad teams mm-hmm. at the bottom. So and I'll you're give, still I'll getting kind of that semblance of eight V one, right? Like where yes. eight could upset this mm-hmm. one. Like I, I do I keep thinking about the NHL adapting that. It be kind of it just keeps it a little interesting. It does. But. Yeah. I still don't like it because in the NBA now you have guys, you have great players who for no other reason other than their Anthony Richards and tired are taking 25 days off because the regular season yeah, doesn't mean anything. Change. And that I, and I don't, change. and I don't like that. Or play defense if, too. If I you're was watching to... more of the uh, starting five and I'm like, the reason that you're getting 120 to 117 is because nobody plays defense out here. Like I would like to see some defense. When shooting has just gotten so, yeah, and, much, so much it's, better everywhere right, across yeah, the league. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, just it's think, fun, but and, and fans, we do this to ourselves because we keep going, so they're just going to do it. But if if I'm going to ask a fan to pay hundred and fifty dollars to sit in the lower bowl to watch an NBA game on January 10th, I can't have the star players sitting out for load management or because they're tired. I just think that's a slap in the face to fans. I mean, it's like preseason too. Like you make sure you have to have so many quote unquote starters or actual rostered players in your preseason, at least for the NHL. I'm assuming NBA does the same thing. I'm not familiar, but right. Like you have yeah, to have Kirill has to be out there for two of the games during preseason just to drive ticket sales. So I don't know, but I get, you don't want to get them hurt sometimes. So whatever. Yeah. I don't really know what that before I die was other than just ranting on how much I hate playoff systems. That's what so. you're, that's what you're here for though. That's what you're here for. We always appreciate it. Ross, we love the rants. We love them. This, and that wasn't an attack against old people this week. So bravo. Bravo. Although Thank you. old people that Thank run you. the league, kind of. Uh, Miles, what do you got? Uh, mine was like tough. It was it was tough this week. It was gonna be. It's like Halloween related. Like, I I don't even know if I'd call it like a before I die, but like, you remember as a kid, Je- like Jesse and Ross. Like, I just remember being able to go run around all these neighborhoods with me and the friends, my friends, and like just get a whole bunch of candy, and it just felt so like. It doesn't feel like Halloween anymore, and maybe I'm just not as involved. But, like, my kids, we go around the neighborhood and stuff. Like, my kids are too young to, like, go run off by themselves. So I'm not saying Mm -hmm. they should just be able to go run off by themselves. And that would never happen. Um, Not at this age. But, like, is that still happening with, like, kids in, like, middle school, you know, like, in that, like, age range? Like, the, like, 10 to 13, 14 range? Like, because I remember when I was a kid, when I was hitting, like, 9, 10, I was gone and yeah. we we had coming back with just like sack loads of candy, and I just, mm-hmm. just maybe I'm maybe I'm missing it, but is it still happening? 
Well, I can tell you from being at my sister's place a few years ago, I live in a townhome where it's very difficult for people to get to me, but I was at my sister's place. She lives in St. Paul and she had almost 200 kids two years ago. Oh, wow. So I do think it happens, but I do think going back to like the trunk or treat, I think the spirit, no pun intended, of Halloween has kind of changed. It's no longer just the one day. And I've thought for years, and I've heard many people say this, I think we do a disservice to the kids in Halloween when it's like a Sunday through a Wednesday night. Maybe Thursday this year is a little bit different. I mean, don't I don't do know. That. Don't don't be this person. Do not. It's on the 31st. Yep. It is no, not going I, to be a specific Friday yeah. or here's Saturday. The, here's the deal. It's, 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 it's not a. Here's the deal, though. It's not a federal holiday. So why can't it be on a Saturday? It's on the 31st. All Hallows Eve. There's meaning to that. The 30th, October 31st. All right. It uh, gets dark early enough. Sinners. It gets on darker. I do. I love I'm a. I love Halloween. My husband hates Halloween. It's probably I'm not going to scare him too, like every right? chance I get. I'm going to today. I know he doesn't listen to the show. Gonna, so today I'm, I'm going to go buy an inflatable thing and I'm going to pretend it's an inflatable yard ornament, except it's going to be me inside and I'm going to scare I'm not going to die on this hill. I just think it's a lot easier for all the neighbors to pick up the vandal, the vandalism stuff and the smashing pumpkins. Great band, by the way. If you can do that on a Sunday morning versus having to do it on a weekday morning when you have to go to work. Does that happen still? I mean, I guess sure it happens every. Oh, yeah. Time. Does it? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. But isn't it fun? Like that. the next day, kind of going to school and kind of like bringing yeah. the candy and yeah. like trading yeah. and doing all that. Like, oh, I don't know. I'm all, that... I'm all about kids having no fun at school. School is for learning. <laughs> <laughs> not not for fun. So I were actually you one of those kids, Ross. You were covering yeah, up you know your paper. He was. You, were doing you know he life. was. <laughs> actually, I was not. I there were really only a couple of classes that I did enjoy. But no, I'm I'm kind of joking. But we've talked about this before. I think last year, I'm really taking this over. I'm going to shut up here shortly. I one of my favorite days of the years of the years of the year. I get so excited the day after Labor Day when I see all the kids miserable getting on the bus going back to school. <laughs> I love it because I'm like, You're welcome, old man. Welcome back, old man. welcome back to the real world, kiddos. I got to do this every day of my life until hopefully one day I can retire. And you guys are so miserable after you have, you've just had 90 <laughs> plus days off. Get on that bus and go Gosh, to learn Ross yourself. Ross is a crotchety something. old man that hates old people. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, but here you are. I actually are. really do love people. I just love I when they don't interfere with me, which is a very <laughs> mean thing to say. I just love when they're on, on the other side of the world. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's why he's sure. tucked away in his yep. town home. Exactly. <laughs> Classic. It's actually very true, by the way. Mine's about thumb holes on your sweatshirts. This is my before I die. We are going to get a consistency. I have a love-hate relationship with thumb holes in general on a sweatshirt. I'm currently wearing one. If you're going to put thumb holes on the sweatshirt, the sweatshirt sleeves need to be long enough for you to be wearing thumb holes. Otherwise, it feels like you're just pulling. Like, see this? This doesn't this doesn't work. Like, I would rather just pull my sleeves up, but now I lose the thumb holes. Now I'm a little chilled on the beginning of my arms. It's a problem. I would like thumb holes to be made when your shirt sweatshirt. In fact, make most long sleeve shirts long enough to cover your hands to where a thumb hole would make sense, right? That's my gripe. No, we don't. Fine. Not really. No, I need the thumb holes, but for if you, you want them, if you want them, I got Sometimes it, you know? it's nice, you know, like, but I just, I feel like it's constricting me with all my rapid movement I do with my arms, you know? <laughs> um, It's, uh, <laughs> exactly. Where need... are you training? You got to be training for football that we talked yeah. about. Like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I missed, no, I missed all the trials. That's what I figured, but we're going to make it happen next year. I'm actually going to reach out to one of the teams and make sure that you it should. happens. I know. Well, because unfortunately, the one weekend it was Oktoberfest. The other weekend it had I had kids football or something like that. Either go to football trials and, or get drunk. Like, right? Like, yeah. I get it. yeah I get you it. know, I had priorities. It was birthday weekend, right? So You know what I'll do, Jesse? I'll get on scheduling your tryout just, you just after. Make, yeah. Just, just after I get on scheduling our Before I Die Happy Hour. Right, which will happen eventually. If you guys would like, I will be doing a live show tomorrow at Tom Reed's. You're all invited. It's going to be a hockey show. Naturally, what time? But, what time? Uh, five o'clock. Giveaways, trivia, two for ones on Nordeast and Premium, and the Wild Play at six. So if you guys want to come, official invite. Appreciate that. I may. Is it appropriate to do like the campaign stop or just swing in for like 15 minutes yeah. to say hi? Yeah. Always. I have a six o'clock engagement, but I might be able to swing that. Do it. Five o'clock. Tom Reed's TRs. Great quesadillas. Good food down there, too. We love them. And what Nothing. show is that, Jesse? It's the Bar Down Beauties. That's my other, my other, my other thing. My other and stick. you also appear on what other show on the Score North podcast? Judd's Hockey Network? Show. You can also catch Judd's Hockey Show. In fact, you can catch all Purple Daily content on Score North along with Timberwolves, Twins, uh, 
we got hockey. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got all of it. So be sure you check out all the Score North content. As always, this is Before I Die on behalf of Ross, Miles, and myself. You're the best. Comment, share, rate, subscribe. And uh, we'll see you later. Number one. One before we die, guys. Number one. I almost forgot to mix in a Hennepin reference. Uh, very quickly, do you guys notice one of the Packers scored a touchdown and he said, take that, Duval." <laughs> I actually, I, I actually laughed at that. That was that was kind of funny. All right, see you, boys. Bye. And girls.